Is it me? Have I gone yampy? This is really freaking me out. <sighs> Typical. It's always when I'm trying to make a video that everything falls to pot. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. That was weird. You guys witnessed it. You guys witnessed my game going yampy and weird. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. This is only supposed to be a quick tutorial and it's turning into this really big ordeal. I always have to make things over the top. I'm showing you the whole tedious process because I don't want you guys thinking that like it's just wham bam there you go. <laughs> you know like although now it just looks like a spider with hairy knees. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not going to pretend I have it all together because I do not. So most of my time is wasted on creating problems and trying to fix my own problems. It's kind of like life really, isn't it? And look at that, I've got like this underground sewer system. And look, you can look through it and it's got a literal hole that goes through to the other side. Note to self care, I know what you're doing before you actually do a tutorial. <laughs> Hello fantastic creatures, I'm Fantasims and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use terrain tool, pond tool, paint tool like a pro. We're going to combine everything together to create these really cool ponds, underground rooms, and incorporate them with things like waterfalls. So you can see how versatile it is and how important it is to use all of these tools together. So before we begin, this is a huge shout out to Zamira because she is the one that asked me to do a tutorial about how to use the pond tool. And to be honest, she's actually the one that pointed out that you can build things underwater. I didn't even know we could do that. So without her tweeting this and asking me to do the video, I honestly wouldn't even know that we can do this. So that's awesome. And we're going to dig into that later. But first, I want to show you how to use the terrain tool with paint and with the pond tool and I'm going to be incorporating waterfalls into my ponds and rivers. You don't have to do that because these are very pack specific like this is from Discover University, this is from Island Living and this is actually from Snowy Escape but these waterfall pieces like this piece, the wooden piece right here is available to everyone in the debug menu but the actual water that goes with it you can only find in Arnie's World Edit Mod. He's unlocked a bunch of debug objects that for some reason the developers haven't released to us but I have this as a room you can download in my gallery. You don't need any mods to be able to put it in your own game. But the reason I'm using waterfalls, even though you might not own these packs, is because a lot of you do love making waterfalls. So I just want to add that little thing in there just to make it more interesting. Okay, so to begin, let's start over here with this one. You're going to go down here into the terrain tools. And if you're not familiar with the different tools, I'm just going to show you real quick because I want this to be for beginners and people who are used to using this alike. So this one is going to elevate the terrain like so. This one is going to lower the terrain like so. This one is really important because it helps smooth out the edges. So we've just completely removed it. But if you use this, you can actually smooth the mound so it's not so extreme and it helps you really blend things together. And I'll show you why that's so useful in a minute. And then this one right here, it will flatten terrain to height. So let's say we go down here. Oh, sorry, I forgot to even put the grid system on. If you press G, you'll actually see it like this. Automatically, it usually looks like this. I like it looking like this sometimes because it'll give you the lines like so. So for this flattened terrain tool, it's really helpful to see where the lines are so that you can flatten it to a certain height and we can go down a bit lower and then flatten it to that height but I actually prefer keeping this grid system off like G like that you just hit the G and then it'll just go back to regular view um, that way I can see so like when I'm using this smooth terrain tool I can see the colors a, a lot better than see if we put the graph back on it can be just a little bit trickier I mean you can still see the color differentiation but sometimes it can just be a bit trickier and then this one is going to flatten to height so if you hold the control and either the left or the right bracket key at the same time see how the the square is going lower I don't know if you can really see it because it's really faint but see it's going higher and higher and higher and higher. And that way you can you can decide where you want the height or the how high or how low you want something to be. And that way it will do it up to that height and it will stop at the limit you've set by using control with the bracket key either to lower or to heighten it. That's different than this one right here because this one, it will only bump up and down to how high or low the terrain already is. It's not gonna go above or below that. But with this one, you can set it to a level above or below that the ground isn't already heightened or lowered to if that makes sense. So for this one I can only go up and down as high as the terrain I already have is but with this one I can set it control right bracket it goes all the way up like I can set it all the way up to there and it's go and I just hold down I'm just holding down the right mouse key or if you're using a trackpad like me just the right side and it'll lift it up to, or lower it to however high you have it set to and then this one is going to flatten the entire lot so if you click on this it's going to undo everything that you've done. Okay now let's look at this area over here this is going to determine how big or small the brush size is now with the recent pond update they actually changed the interface on this and they actually gave us more options for how big or small something can be so let's select something like this that's as big as the circle is going to be it's rather large or you can lower it to be tiny 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 
and it's going to only do a little bit at a time. Then you can also do it as a square. If you'd prefer to have more of a square shape, it's gonna do a square like so. Let's do the big one and you can see it and it's gonna do a square shape. Then when we bump down to this, you get softness. So it's kind of like when you're using like an airbrushing tool on a photo editing app or something, like if you're blurring or whatever, um, it's gonna blur the edges a lot more and soften them out. So let's, I'll show you an example. If we decrease the softness, let's go to the circle one. Let's flatten terrain first. Okay, so the softness is completely turned off. Look at that. You're not going to get those nice domed edges. It's just going to lift the entire circle up. If we bump up the softness all the way up, you're going to get more of a smooth cone shaped mound. So that can be really helpful if you're wanting to elevate an entire circular type shape platform or a square one. Let's try it with the square. We've bumped down the softness completely and it's going to lift that entire square up. Or if we bump up the softness completely, you're going to get that pyramid shape like so. Let's flatten that down. Okay, next is this adjustment right here. And this is going to adjust the speed in which the mound increases or decreases. So let's lower it all the way down and notice I'm pressing it, but notice how slow it's elevating. This can be really helpful if you're only trying to elevate something a little bit. You don't want the mound to just zoom straight up. That's That could be too much. Like maybe you just want to have a subtle elevation. Now, if we bump up the speed all the way to the mountain side, now when we click on it, it's going to zoom straight up there. So if you're trying to raise everything all together, the faster you do it might be easier. But if you're trying to make some subtle changes to the terrain, you might want to lower it all the way down. I tend to like keeping it a bit slower and keeping the blur, the softness further up. But if you're trying to elevate the entire area, the entire lot, you're gonna to wanna to use the faster settings and maybe not blur it so much. By default, they'll both be in the center. Okay, now that we've become more familiar with the terrain tools, let's start using it to create a pond. Now, in order to create a pond, you will need to first use the terrain tools and we're going to want to lower the terrain and we're gonna choose the round shape and let's bump up the size because I'm gonna be doing it with this big waterfall. I'm just gonna keep these in the center and we're just gonna lower. Actually, that might be a bit too fast, but we'll finesse it in a minute. It. So for this one, I'm just going to create like the shape right here, like it's flowing into it like that. And that's a good place to start. That's a little too deep for what I want. I probably should have adjusted the speed because that's what made it go down so quick. But that's fine because now what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this flattened terrain and I'm going to pick what level I want to be the depth. I kind of like where it's at right here and I'm just going to use that and it's going to bring the lowest parts up to that level and it's going to lower any of the higher parts down to that level. That's quite deep, but I like it. And we're going to finesse it even more in a second. So that's great. I've got very very deep river right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the grid off for a second because just visually I prefer when it's not on. And I'm going to jump on over to this smooth terrain. This tool is incredible because if you click on it, it'll start to smooth out that slope so that you can have more of a gradual decline. It will lift up the base a bit more and it will lower the top part, but it'll give you a nicer gradual slope. And so I'm just going to keep clicking on it to give us a smoother type of edge. Now I can adjust it to make it a bit softer and not so quick. And that way, it'll it can be it's just easier to control when you reduce when you increase the softness and readjust and lower the speed it can give you just a bit more control it takes a little longer but then you haven't got like mounds just zipping around all of a sudden making it difficult and then if you just tap on the edges just one tap at a, at a time you can really finesse the slope and this works great because the one thing I really don't like about terrain tools is you can't paint on this brown part or in other worlds this will be stone or it'll be like sand depending on what world you're in but this harsh edge right here you can't paint on it which I think is I can understand because it would stretch out the paint. So you might end up with some funky shapes. Personally, I wouldn't care if the terrain paint got a bit stretched on these parts. I would just love the ability to paint it. So the reason why this tool right here, the smooth terrain tool is so cool, is that if you keep doing it and you keep finessing this slope, you can actually get the entire mound to be green and grassy in this world. If you're in like Oasis Springs, it'll be sand colored, but then it's paintable. And when you can paint on it, that's you can really add some really fine details to your ponds and rivers. So I'm just, I'm just keeping on clicking on this tool just gently and I want to remove as much of the brown as I possibly can. That way later on I can paint. This is also important too if you're trying to create a slope that your sim can walk up. Your sim cannot walk up steep slopes so using this tool to smooth out the terrain and make it all the same color means that your sim can actually walk up a mound so long as it's entirely like in this world it needs to be entirely green. If it's entirely green your sim will be able to walk up it so this is great when you're trying to create a slope that leads up to a building. So for example I'll quickly show you. Let's say I have like I'm creating a castle or whatever kind of build and here's my house over here and let's elevate it up to the height at which we've we've kind of got the slope starting and in order to get it perfectly at the same level as my building I can 
can use this flattened terrain right here and it will start the slope out at, at exactly the right spot and let's say let's just swoop it around like that and let's say I want the sim to be able to walk up this hill I can do like another curve here let's say this is the front of the lot and I want my sim to be able to walk up this winding path this tool right here smooth terrain is perfect because you can do this right here and so long as you can get it down to be green we're gonna keep pressing it until we can get it to be green we're smoothing it we're smoothing it and this might be a bit too much so let's reduce the speed even more and soften it up a bit more and you might even want to reduce the size and just like this takes forever like creating these pathways can take a bit of time I'm just gonna try and speed it up a bit and already we're kind of getting there see how the, the it's smoothing it out getting it green okay let's increase the size a bit because I want this to go a bit faster for the sake of this video okay, and I'm just gonna keep pressing keep pressing and then I'm going to use this flattened one again at the very front because I need this brown part to be reduced and lowered and then I'm gonna jump back over to smooth terrain and just get rid of any brown bits okay I've, I've removed most of the brown see we've got a very gradual slope and then just to make sure it can get up to the doorway properly I'm just gonna do a couple clicks of this just to make sure and then I can go back in and remove any brown bits if I want to but now your sim will be able to walk up that mound that hill into the house that you've created so this is why this one is by far one of the best tools that you can use to really smooth out those slopes okay so I'm happy with how smooth that is right now we can finesse it once we fill it with water so if you go over to right here the water tool you can click on the water depth map and click on G make sure that you have G on and it will it will show you with color variants how deep the water is now we can raise the water lower the water fill the water to height and completely remove water so it's very similar to the terrain tools themselves let's use the raise the water you can keep clicking on it until you fill up the water and you'll see the colors change the more green it is the shallower the water is the more blue the darker the blue is the deeper the water is or you can just go straight to fill to height and kind of click on the level you want it to be and it will fill that whole area with water and you might say oh that's a bit too much water I'm going to reduce it so then you can use the lower water tool and just kind of finesse it to the height that you want it to be let's say we're gonna have it right there actually I'm going to lower it just a bit because that's still a bit too high okay that's looking good but as you notice because we haven't painted the terrain it's weird because in real life if you have a pond or a river that's that deep you're not gonna have a bright green base to it this is where the terrain paint really comes in handy but before we jump over to that let's adjust this waterfall because it's not quite sitting where we want it to now if you have tool mod installed you can just pull up the menu click on this and let's lower it elevate lower it by uh, minus one let's see where that puts it and see so you can get it right to the edge and then we can hide the edges with rocks you can also do it without tool mod by clicking on it and seeing where the footprint is okay the footprint is right here so if we go over to the build tools and we just put a flat square I don't know if that's exactly where it was no let's move this over to where the footprint is close oh actually that's fine it's over enough of the footprint that then you can just lower the room and it will lower the waterfall where you want it and then you can just hide that with rocks or whatever now these colors blend quite well so it's going to be a lot easier than blending with maybe some of these brighter colors but now let's jump over to terrain paint to finesse our pond river whatever this is okay so if we click on the brush it gives us all of these paint options the more packs you have the more paint options you're gonna have but the base of the riverbed needs to be darker so you can use like just the base game brown and the tools work the same way you can adjust the brush size and you can adjust how soft the edges are so for example if you get rid of the softness you're just gonna get this harsh edged circle or square depending on which brush shape you're using if you increase it you're gonna get more of a blur and you're gonna have to hold it a lot longer to get the darker kind of color but it's got a lot softer edge so I tend to like keeping this all the way up unless I really need to make a defined line around something which I usually don't but if you want to create a color really quickly this one is better so because we're gonna want to paint this base of the pool and we don't really need some soft edges right now I'm gonna reduce the softness and just paint this base and now that blends a lot better I think actually the darkest swatch out of everything is this one let's try that one because I think the one we have right now is still a bit too bright there you go and that will blend better into what the base looks like now I want the edges to get brighter as we go up towards the edge but I think I want to use like rocks or something so I really like this one the cliffs of Rover and let's soften this a bit Ooh, that might actually be too bright but I do really like these rocks right here so I'm just gonna paint a basic edge right now now something to keep in mind the edge of any water body of water unless it's like sand is going to have some green have some plants growing and so I'm gonna want to add some green so I'm thinking maybe I can either do a grass like a, a muddy kind of grass and I'm gonna bump up the softness maybe reduce the paintbrush size and kind of go around really gently and it's covering up my stone a bit too much but that's okay because we can come back and finesse it and I'm, I just want to darken this a little bit because it's a bit too bright
right. And this is really how I paint everything. It's just layers. It's like painting in real life. It's just adding lots of different tones and shading. If you just go in and block it with one entire color, it's not going to look as realistic. But if you go in with lots of different levels, you eventually get something that starts to look really realistic. Now this does not look realistic. So then I'm going to go in and I want to, I blurred out too many, too much of my rocks. So I'm going to go back in with those rocks and I'm going to increase and I'm just going to gently tap on it, especially around these edges. And in real life, things aren't perfectly uniform. So it doesn't matter to make it look the same around the entire edge of the, the water. I'm just going to add some of those rocks back and in some areas they're going to be more defined than others. But I don't like how bright this edge part looks. So this is where you can come in with the eraser tool. And if you put it all the way down so that you reduce the softness, when you click on it, it's just going to remove the entire thing and we don't want that. So you want to put the softness all the way up if you want to just finesse it just a little bit and just gently tap on it and it'll just slightly remove some of it. There we go. Now around the very edge of the pool, water, pond, whatever you're creating, it's going to be darker, like muddier. Let's reduce this size. And just around the very edge, I'm just gonna add some brown, just to make it look like it's very muddy, the soil is very wet, I'm just gonna keep going around. Okay, it's starting to look a bit more realistic. Now, of course, when you start to put plants in, then it will really look realistic, but I'm thinking this part right here is still a bit too bright, so I'm gonna go in with maybe not so harsh a brown, but maybe back to these rocks, increase the size a bit, and just like gently blend it out a bit so it's not so bright down there. Okay, there we go. And I can change the water color too. So in order to actually change the color of the water, you're going to have to click over here onto outdoor water decor. This is where you're going to find all of your pool stuff. But if you click on the water droplets, it gives you different options depending on what packs you have. So you can have, like this one has more of a teal color from Get Together. That's not really matching with the color of our waterfall. So it looks like the original watercolor is probably the best one. These ones are new ones that came with the pond tool. But if you've got a waterfall, you're not really going to have this algae and all of these leaves on top of the water because flowing water is, is going to keep the surface a lot fresher. So it looks like the original color actually works best for this one. And then if you click on the duck down here, you've got the new pond effects. So then around the edges of the water, you might have some plant growth. So you can just start adding plants around the edge. I like to do mine in clusters because it's more visually appealing. And just thinking realistically, when you have running water, you're, you're not going to have anything that requires like, like this kind of stuff grows in still water, not in running water. So the center of this, I'm not going to put any of these kind of objects like plants and stuff because it just, it, it's not as realistic. But around the edges of the water, you're going to find some grass and some plant growth. We can add these logs and I'm just being quick. So I'm just dumping them all over the place. Actually, sometimes when I just slap the stuff down, it ends up working better than if I take my time thinking about it. <laughs> There's also these grasses, but I find these quite dark, the ones that come in this category. I mean, they do work because they sit on the top of the water, which is a lot easier than trying to elevate it with the nine key. So you can go around the edges, but I think because they come with like this shadowy soil base to them, it doesn't always blend perfectly into the edges of your own build. Like it just looks too dark. So I'm actually not gonna use those ones. With pretty much every pack, there's a bunch of plants that you can use, but I really like the ones from Cottage Living. Right here, like these color ones, I think work a lot better. Yeah, those colors blend, I think a lot better with the lily pads and everything. And there's also one, let me see if I can find it. Here we go. I like this one too, cause it like folds over. It doesn't quite look as good from a distance. Like if you zoom out, well, I guess it's true of all the grasses, they kind of lose their dimension, but up close they look really nice. The only thing you have to keep in mind though, is they always go up to the level of the terrain. So sometimes they can end up hovering in if you're not using tool mod to lower plants, it can be a bit trickier, but inside the actual water, they work really well. Now, of course, this is a video about terrain tools, so I'm not going to go too much into detail with this part, but then you can go in and take some of the debug rocks and just kind of neaten up these edges to make it look more like a realistic waterfall. I'm just using the rocks from Cottage Living, but these are actually identical to the rocks from Snowy Escape, just different colors. If you're not using tool mod, it can get a bit tricky to get the rocks to sit where you want them. Usually I have to use tool mod to lower them into the ground, but you can do a similar technique that we did with the actual waterfall. If you can find the footprint of the rock, you can put it on a piece of flooring and lower the flooring. So let's see if we can do that with this one. Let's take a piece of flooring and just like pop it right here, see if this works. And then click on the edge of this and see if we can lower this rock. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. And then we've lowered the rock into the terrain. Let's go back to rocks. I click on the tree. Now my rocks are organized. The debug rocks are organized in this rock section because I'm using Twisted Mexi's Better Build By mod, which organizes debug objects into categories that you can easily find, which I absolutely love. But yeah, by lowering a piece of floor, you don't even have to use tool mod and then you can put that in there. Now, obviously you can see this right here. So then you can go in with some rocks and maybe like hide this like so. That's starting to look good. And then you can also go around the edges of the water with some trees just to make it look even more realistic. Again, we're having the trees hover over the edge a bit too much. So let's go back. And this time we're gonna make a one tile wide piece of floor. Let's 
copy that and move it over here. Put it right underneath the tree, put the tree on top of it, and then lower this into the ground. Lovely. And then we can hide this with maybe some of these plants that we used over here. Perfect. And then you can really decorate the edges. Something I also like to do when I place a plant into the ground to make it look really realistic, take some of that dark terrain paint. Ooh, that paintbrush is way too big make it small. Go around the base of it and darken it up. Now it's kind of hard to see because this is so shady but it just makes it look so much more realistic to have dark edges around plants because in real life that's what it looks like. And there you've got the start of a body of water. I'm not going to labor over this too much because I also want to show you how to make some rivers and work with different colors of water but we'll try and do that real quick because I don't want this video to end up being way too long. Okay so I'm going to add this second waterfall off to the side. Let's just lower it. I put it on a room like I did the other ones. We might have to lower it even more but I'm just going to do a more shallow river that leads into this large body of water that we already have going on here. So I'm going over to my terrain tools, we're going to lower it but we're going to have to do it softer this time. And we're just going to create this river right here. Sometimes the terrain jump around a bit which is a bit annoying so it can be tricky if you're not used to using them it can be a bit jumpy. Okay then I'm going to go over to smooth the terrain, just smooth those edges out. And actually I don't like how blobby this little river piece <laughs> turned out so I want to elevate some of the terrain over here so jump back over to raise terrain and I'm just going to click on it bit by bit just to get it to the shape that I want it. That looks a bit better then I'm going to smooth that terrain so it's not so intense. There we go. We're going to need to lower this waterfall because it has a funky shape to the base of it and I want to hide that under the water. Once you put it under the water you can't see it anymore. And then we're going to go back in with our terrain paints, darken that base like we did before, darken the edges up a bit, give it a bit of stone, a bit of highlight, then go in with some grass, make this a bit bigger, just tap on it a bit, add some of that grass blending out. What I like about this one right here is with Get Together it's pretty much the same as the base game one, it just has a bit more of a golden colour than the bluey colour, is that if you if you just tap on it gently it can help blend stone into grass really well. See how it does that? It gives it like that speckled effect like the rocks are breaking down into the grass and it can create a really nice edge to it. And then I'm going to go over with a bit of a darker colour just to blend it even better so it's not such a stark contrast between the dark brown into like this light stone colour just to blur it up a bit. And really this is all it is, it takes a bit of finessing. If you want it to look as realistic as possible it's just a matter of just layering and layering a bunch of different colours until you get it the way that you want it to look. It's not perfect, if I was actually using this as a build I would probably spend a lot more time trying to finesse all of this. Plus I don't like this harsh corner right here so I'm actually going to go back over to terrain tools and I'm going to lower it a bit. Just going to tap on it and just smooth out that shape a bit more. It's like a jelly bean river. But as you can see now it's got funky terrain paint colours on it so I'm going to go in back into the paints and go back into the browns. And the reason I'm showing you me jumping back and forth is because this is pretty much how I do it and I want you guys to get a good sense of like sometimes it just takes jumping back and forth until you get it the way you want it to look. Okay so we've got our jelly bean river over here and I think it would also look nice to have this also flowing into this body of water that we've created. Okay so now I'm going to create three skinny rivers. It's essentially exactly what we've been doing but I figured I'd show you how to finesse it so that you've just got three rivers. Sometimes it can be hard though just to start using the terrain tools. Like sometimes it's, see how it's kind of jumpy and sometimes it can be hard to figure out what shape you want to create. I would actually use the paint tool first and pick a colour that really stands out. So I'm going to use a sand colour. I'm going to reduce the softness, reduce the size and I'm going to draw it out first. Like what I want the shape of the river to be. So let's just play around with how we could shape it. We could shape it like this. We could have these two kind of run, in, run into each other, maybe further down there, and then this one could run in like that. No, I don't like what I just did. So then I go in with the eraser tool and just quickly erase that part I don't want. Finesse it a little bit. Yeah, I kind of like those shapes. I wouldn't have been able to create those shapes if I didn't paint them first. Then I can go over to the terrain tools, go into the lower terrain, and I can trace around and see how it automatically filled with water as soon as I connected it. And if I actually start at the end right here, I can see how the water is going to flow into it. Let's bump up this speed just a little bit and start to shape around. I'm just going to try and follow this curve as best as I can. It's going to it's going to require some finesse because look how jaggedy it is. It can be a bit hard at first when you're trying to learn how to use these tools to be so smooth. That's why I like to just do like a little section at a time. Okay cool it's very jagged we'll fix that up in a minute. Now let's work on these trickier pieces and I'm just swooping back and forth trying to get that shape. Not bad not bad that one actually turned out quite smooth. Okay let's do this last piece. I want to make sure they don't end up bleeding into each other too much. 
And I'm going to get rid of these barriers that are preventing the water from flowing into the rest of it. There we go. Look how jagged that is. So then I'm just going to go into the eraser tool and I'm just going to er just hover over that and just erase those lines that I created and I'll fix it up with the paint tool in a bit. But we've got the basic shape of our rivers. Now we just need to finesse them. Okay, these rivers have turned out a bit chubbier than I wanted. So I'm going to go in with the elevation, the raised terrain tool, and I'm just going to kind of raise some of the edges around. And then if it's too much, I can go in and just smooth it out a bit. I'm showing you the whole tedious process because I don't want you guys thinking that like it's just wham bam there you go <laughs> you know like even if you've been using terrain tools for a while it still requires a lot of tweaking so they're pretty cool to use but they're not necessarily the easiest thing to use oops wrong one should be lowering it not raising it Whoop. okay these rivers are quite deep now okay now I'm jumping over to using flatten to terrain because I'm noticing that that is helping to smooth out some of the shapes just a little bit so basically I'm just jumping between all these different tools just trying to play around with what's going to smooth everything out a lot better this is helping me get a bit of a bit more green close closer to the edge and get rid of some of those jaggedy triangular shapes. It's not getting rid of all of them. I think it's probably impossible to get rid of completely all of them, but this flattened terrain does help get rid of these really tall mounds that I ended up with. Whereas if I only use this smooth terrain, it's going to elevate some of this part too much to the point where it'll like widen the riverbed and I don't want that either. So it's just a matter of playing around with it until you get the desired result, which is tedious. And if you don't like, if you don't have patience, then this, <laughs> this might not be the thing for you. Doing something as tricky like as a, as a very skinny river but an overall big pond, that should be fine for anyone. Okay, so you see these like square shaped shadows? It's because when I was using the lower terrain, it's like lowering it in sections rather than smooth. Like, I don't know why it just jumps between sections so that like it won't actually smooth out. See, it's creating ridges between. It's like it bounces over sections, which drives me crazy. So what you can do is if you go over, like we talked about before, where you use the flattened to height one, because if I try and use flattened terrain, see how you can still see part of the white? That means that if I just click on this, eventually it's going to get rid of the water because it's going to lift up the terrain way too high. But if I want to smooth out the base, I can use the flatten to height one and using the control and the left bracket, we can lower it to the desired depth that we want. And I want to make sure that it's submerged enough underwater. And that way I can try and smooth out these ridge pieces so that it flows together a lot better. See how that's flowing the sections together a lot better. So now we can kind of go around and at least get the base of our rivers to look a lot smoother and less jaggedy. And then I'm going back in again with the smooth terrain tool smoothing out those edges it is widening it so we're then going to have to go back in and kind of elevate the edges so again this is a bit of a tedious process and i'm also kind of clicking on the actual riverbed even though we just smoothed it out with this flatten to height tool so that it doesn't look as jaggedy i still want to smooth it out because it's quite steep and this will just help smooth those bumpy edges and hopefully get rid of all these triangular shapes. So here we are so far, and as you can see, the rivers aren't quite as skinny as I wanted them to be. So I'm gonna then go back into the raised terrain and try and fix up these edges once again to make them skinnier. Okay, that looks much better. I like how skinny that is, but again, we've got some bumpy, lumpy edges. So I'm then gonna, hopefully this is the last time, go with the flattened terrain tool and just try and flatten out those edges a bit, get more green back into it. And it looks like I can't fully remove the jaggedy edges here, so I'm just gonna to try and hide that with some plants so I'm just clicking on here just to get rid of the lumpy brown bits and add some more of that greenery and that's really helping look we're getting more of that green back like you can hold it down and like that works pretty well but sometimes if you hold it down it can really start changing the shape too much but in this case it's creating a nice smooth edge okay I think overall I'm pretty happy with how that turned out okay so here's where we are at so far I didn't want to do too much landscaping and not show you kind of the progress because you might be like how did you do all that already and basically all I've been doing is I've been taking the rocks and sizing them down and kind of shaping them around the edges like so just to box in these waterfalls and over here with these whatever these are drainage chutes or, or whatever I'm just taking more of these rocks and just adding more in what I like to do is if you've got this massive rock over here put some more rocks around it in different levels so that it kind of looks like it's blending into the scenery so if I take some smaller rocks and place them around the edges of a larger rock then it just bleeds into the landscape so much better and then I'm just taking these clusters of crumble rocks and placing them around as well because in nature you tend to have a lot of loose rocks at the base of cliffs and mountains and stuff like that. The only thing, I don't know if these footprints interfere with your sims path, so if you are wanting to maybe put an activity over here or something, you might actually need to keep a path clear for your sim to get there. But I'm just showing you how to landscape. And then again, to make this look more realistic, let's get rid of the grid for a second, let's go back into terrain paint and we want to darken the base. So you can even go in with like a dark green if you want. That's not quite dark enough. It is a, a subtle darkness though. 
curve. Actually, I quite like that. Let's go one size up and just tap it a couple times to just blend it out a little bit better. We're creating some moisture, some shadows in the grass surrounding each of these rocks. Is it a tedious process? Probably for a lot of you, <laughs> but the difference is that you create something that looks really realistic. You can even take something like this that has a bit of grass in with it and start to wiggle that a little bit around the base, give it a bit of a soil mixed with grass look. Okay, then I'm going to go in with the dark one and let's reduce the softness just a little bit, make it a bit smaller, and then I'm just going to go in with a bit more detail and really darken some of this around the base. And look at that, just look at the difference between these rocks compared to the ones that I haven't done anything with. And to show that point even further, if we use the eraser tool and we erase all of the terrain that I've done, look at what a huge difference that makes. With the terrain paint, without any terrain paint with terrain paint without any terrain paint now i don't know maybe you like it better without any terrain paint but i just feel like it looks a lot more realistic with terrain paint so that's why i love using all of these features in combination with each other i'm going to real quick show you how to make a more tropical one and then we're going to jump over real quick to showing how you can submerge your entire build inside a pond okay now this one is from island living and you can't click once you've placed it you can't really click on it like i'm trying to click on it right now and it's just not letting me that's why i put it on a floor that way i can move it around because i put the floor right underneath where the grid is i don't know if we can make this smaller and still have it work. Let's test it out, see how small we can get. Oh, it does work. Okay, so we're gonna go back over into our terrain tools and we're gonna do everything that we already learned how to do in this video. And since we already have a level down here, let's just use the flatten terrain tool and just kind of flatten this whole area, create a little shallow tropical pool. Okay, I've got my basic pool, so then I'm gonna go over into smooth terrain. Let's make this just a bit bigger. I'm just tapping around the edges. Now this one's a very shallow one, so it doesn't take much. Okay, then we're gonna go over to the water tool, the pool tool, and I filled it with water, but that's way Way too high so let's lower it okay that's good and then we are going to we're going to change the watercolor let's see if there's a better watercolor terrain tools go over to the outdoor decor i mean that one kind of works from jungle adventure no let's do this get together one because i want to show you how you can blend two different colors into it and then we're going to go over to terrain paint and this time we're pretending it's sand so let's look at our sandy color options okay let's start with a darker one we're just going to paint this whole area with sand oh already the color kind of blends quite nicely into the waterfall color that we have. It doesn't matter if you make a mess because you can always use the eraser tool to finesse it. Oops, like that big bump I just did. <laughs> okay, and then I think there might, let's go over to the tiles, go over to the grass section and there's already a sand colored one. So I don't know if that will, nah, it doesn't really help, does it? We'll try and hide it with a rock or something, with a sandy colored rock or some coral or something. And then we're gonna go back into our terrain paints and we really need to finesse these colors because this is just like, ne it just looks neon. It doesn't look natural whatsoever. Actually, you know what? No, sorry. First, we're gonna go over into rocks because I just wanna find some tropical looking rocks that we can use for the waterfall and then we can use that to figure out what colors we want to use for the terrain paints. Oh, this one's nice. This one's from Get to Work. Oh, look at that shape. That's a nice shape. That's a nice boulder. Yes, perfect. It's got the perfect curved shape to just lock in that little waterfall. Journey to Batu has these ones. They're slightly different color, but I kind of like how they wrap around like maybe for the outside. Yeah, that's quite nice. Okay, now let's add some palm trees to our little private lagoon. And then in the debug menu of Island Living, there's actually a pile of sand. So let's see if we can kind of of, yeah, you can hide this room with that debug sand. It's not perfect, but <laughs> it looks kind of lumpy actually. I don't know if I like that, but maybe if we spread it out a bit. I don't know, we'll just leave it like that for right now. And then if you go in with terrain paint, we can try and blend all of this together. It's good that it doesn't match really well because I can show you some tips you can use to blend better. Okay, so we're back in the sandy colors and we want some a darker color right here. See if we can darken up this area. There we go, that kind of blends into the rocks a bit better. And this, oh look, it's perfect. Then we can kind of give it a dark shadowy edge to it. Nice. That actually blends so much better. Let's fade this even more, increase the softness, maybe increase the size and just kind of do some swooping motions just to blend that rock color into the rest of the sand and then just tap on the edges. to. Um, it kind of gives it like an ombre effect so it blends out like so. Just keep tapping at it then we can blend it out real nice. Okay now again around the edges of sand you tend to get a darker color. I don't know if this, this might be a bit too much. Let's decrease the size. Let's see how dark this goes. Oh, actually, that's not bad. So if we kind of create some dark, more of like an orangey sand color around the edges of the rocks, it gives the sense that the sand is wet around the edge of the water. So again, around the rim of the water, you want to create that wet effect. On this one, it was by adding like dark greens and browns. And on this one, it's adding a bit more of like an orangey color sand because when sand is wet, it's a lot more orange colored. And let's add some dark around the rocks, see if we can get that to blend even better. I'm still thinking we're going to need a slightly darker color to kind of blend this gap we have between the rocks and the back of the waterfall. So let's try maybe this color, the Garden Bedlam. That might be a bit too dark. 
actually it's not too shabby i would love oops that was too much i would love if um we had a watercolor terrain paint i mean i know you can with custom content oh but i would love a watercolor terrain paint just so that we could create like the shallow edge of water bleeding out just a little bit more i would love that so much and then at the base of the trees again you can go in with like a dark maybe i don't know if a brown would be too much let's test it out that actually looks green okay not that one let's try the dark one we used before yeah that's not too bad create just a bit of shadow around the edge nice i'm gonna make it a bit smaller we don't want too much of a brown shadow around the tropical one because then i think it would break the realism and i think we need to maybe go back with some of that orange yeah that's too brown so let's go back with some of that orange make it slightly bigger and just tap oh no now that looks green <laughs> never mind guys let's get rid of that brown see it's just it's all a learning experience why does it look green didn't we use that color before oh no i think we used this one silly me oh no that one's green too why is it looking green what happened guys why is it looking green it didn't look green when we first did it and where did all the paint go around the edge what happened is this like the twilight zone or something like literally guys didn't we just use these we just used them and they didn't they looked orange they didn't look green why is this turning out green da -na 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 -na. <laughs> I, don't, I honestly don't know what's just happened is it me have i gone yampy maybe try desert pavers will that look they're all turning out green this is so weird like this is the color i used before and now it's got this green look to it yeah all of them i'm trying all of them and they all have like a green look to them this one doesn't okay you know what we're just gonna use this one because i honestly don't know what just happened but this one is slightly darker so i don't know what happened to the edge of my pool this is really freaking me out whatever <laughs> so let's just try it with this one it's, it's still too bright i still need my that orangey color i don't know uh, what about earthy dirt oh no see that they all are like brown and green colored what is happening okay i just jumped in and out of live mode and now it's got this weird ridge around so i think a glitch is happening in my game right now typical it's always when i'm trying to make a video that everything falls to pot <laughs> i don't know what's going on but the orange has turned green these ones are everything has a green tint to it and now that it has a weird green ridge around it what is going on guys okay let's just blur it all out with this color see if we can fix it gee willikers that's okay i mean when things go wrong at least it can be helpful hopefully okay so i've smoothed out the sandy edge and then i'm going back to using this one right here just to darken it up a bit i don't know what's going on i'm just tapping this slightly darker color see if we can remedy this somehow well that's a bummer it looks like the terrain paint isn't working properly for me right now it's life i suppose but you get the gist hopefully it does look a bit more it looks more realistic than it did before at least oh my orange is working again look guys there's no more green that was weird you guys witnessed it you guys witnessed my game going yampy and weird <laughs> i don't know what's going on oh boy okay so we've got our orange trim back now it's a bit too dark so let's let's not mess around too much with this anymore in case we start to run into glitches again and let's just tap on this around the edges just to ombre out the edges a bit and then let's go back to was this the original color we had make it a bit bigger and then tap just over the whole thing just to try and blend it out just a little bit brighten it up just a little bit you know what i'm just i'm just gonna leave it i could keep finessing it but i'm just gonna leave it before everything goes crazy again <laughs> but as you can see we've got this cool pool and then if you go over into live mode and we play look at that oh it looks so pretty I mean, realistically, it doesn't make sense for water to just be leaking from rocks, but we'll just use our imagination. Oh, that looks so nice. And then if we go over to our original one over here, look at the water gliding down. I mean, you can kind of see the square edge right here. So to hide that, what you can actually do is if we go back over into build mode, if we go over into the outdoor water decor and I think it's the, is it the fountain decorations? Yes, we've got all of the small dome water emitter. So it used to be that in build mode, you'd be able to see how high the water is. But for, ever since the pond tool, you can no longer see what the water, these water effects are going to look like until you go over into live mode, which I do not like. Okay, so let's go over into live mode. Okay. And that kind of hides the edge a little bit, having these little water things. We might need to put some more realistically. There'd be some splashes down here too. I don't know. This is only supposed to be a quick tutorial and it's turning into this really big ordeal. I always have to make things over the top. And if you want to try and make them invisible, you can size them down with the bracket key or you can use tool mod and resize them to 0.001 and they will completely disappear. So if we go back into live mode, yeah, that's a bit more realistic. And at least it hides the edge a little bit. I don't know. It's kind of making it light up a bit more. So maybe that was, I made it worse. Maybe put some rocks at the bottom, break up some of that unnatural shape to it or something i don't know oh look you can even add some more detail by placing some rocks at the base of the pond now i'm using black ones because i noticed that the like if you see this color rock under the water kind of looks a bit pale but i don't know i kind of like that effect let's add some more and see what happens you know half the time when i do tutorials i'm making stuff up as i go along like i kind of already know what i'm doing but then i also discover things as i'm doing it <laughs> so hopefully that's not too annoying for you guys look i'm not going to pretend i have it all together because i do not i'm still learning a ton of things of what you can and cannot do okay that's pretty cool I 
I wonder if we can also put plants underwater too. Yeah, look. It drops down to the bottom. Ooh, that's kind of fun. Yeah, I like that. So we can create this whole underwater thing. And it'll look kind of cool when we start to put fish inside of the pond, which I'll show you how to do now. I'm going to have to cut out so much footage because this video, <laughs> I've already been recording for like two hours. So yeah. Ooh, I just thought if I had used the rocks from Snowy Escape, they're similar to these cottage living ones, but they're a lot brighter. I could have put a cave on top of the waterfall and then it would look like that's where the water was coming out of, which is kind of cool. But I didn't. So I guess, you know, I have another idea of how you could make a cave with these darker rocks. If we go to the live edit objects, there's these doors. And if we use the back of this door, that could act as like the entrance to the cave. And then, oops, and then you could take some of the rocks. Some of the rocks are flat at the bottom. So I don't know if there's any that are like rounded. There's some rocks that are rounded at the bottom. I think these ones maybe. Like you want more of a boulder shape. That way it's not hollow underneath. But basically you can just like take rocks and place them around. This is a really shoddy job, but if you did it nice, you can create like a cave-like structure. Okay, that's really ugly. These are not the right rocks to use. There's these rocks from Vampires. It has a bit more of a brownish tint to it, but I mean, it is quite similar and it has like an underbelly to the rock, so it's not going to look hollow from underneath. You could use some of these rocks and shape them around to create the cave. Ooh, and look, they could be rotated with Toolmod. <gasps> look, we can create a rounded shape with it. Ooh. Yeah, this works perfect. I rotated a couple more of them by 30 degrees each. And look at that. That's perfect. Although the cave is really high up, so then what I'm gonna do. This is supposed to be a tutorial on the pawn tool. I'm getting carried away. This is my problem. This is why everything takes me forever to build because I'm j I just can't stop tinkering with stuff. That's lower by two. I don't know. I just there's just so many ideas, so many things that we can do with builds, and I get so excited about it. And I just want to share all those ideas with you guys because I don't know. They might help you with your builds, or you might look at them and be like, "Oh, that's excessive." <laughs> Which, if that's what you think, that's okay because it is excessive. I don't know. The color is a bit too pale. <laughs> I don't know if that even looks any good. Yeah, maybe we should just leave it where it was. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> maybe I can try and hide some of that coloring with foliage. Like if you do something like this, it kind of masks the fact that the colors don't match. <laughs> this is this is seriously, like this is the way my brain works when I'm building stuff. Like a, a lot of you guys ask me, how do you come up with this stuff? A lot of the times it's just, I create problems like this, like with colors not matching or I don't know, whatever the problems are. And then I have to try and come up with solutions to try and fix it. So most of my time is wasted on creating problems and trying to fix my own problems. It's kind of like life really, isn't it? I don't know, something like that. You could finesse it a lot better and then blend the colors in a lot better. I don't know, I think that looks pretty cool. Okay, I'm just gonna finish touching up this so it looks nice for the thumbnail picture. <laughs> And then I'll show you how to submerge buildings and foundations into ponds. Ooh, another fun one you can use. <laughs> I keep getting distracted. I'm sorry, guys. Another fun one you can do use is this one from Jungle Adventure because this one slides up and down the edge of it as well. So if, I don't know, there's some base game options. There's some options from other packs. And look, if you place them underwater and size them up quite big, look, it creates like this underwater ecosystem. And so you get like this 3D effect. I don't know if you can really tell in this video because of, it's probably going to be a lot more pixelated, but you've got different layers. You've got the rocks underneath. You've got some of these plants poking through then you've got like this algae looking stuff growing on the surface it's starting to look quite realistic all right so it is looking like a super lush oasis all i did was put in a bunch of trees from cottage living and added a few more plants i really need to stop because i'm getting carried away but i just got this idea and i want to try it and show you guys even though this has nothing to do with this tutorial well i mean it kind of does we're landscaping but i thought what if we like resize these and make it look like this crazy ancient tree with roots sticking out just make them slightly smaller and kind of blend them together like so. I'm just going to use alt placement to finesse it. I'm really bad at swiveling things with alt placement. Ah! Okay, there we go. Ew, they kind of look like spider legs. <laughs> I'm going to stop there. I was tempted to do even more, but I'm just going to stop there. And then I'm going to use tool mod because I love it so much. And I'm just going to lower them into the ground so that they look partially submerged under the soil. And then if we pull up terrain paint like before, let's use this one because it's got a similar effect to the actual branches. These logs kind of have this soily grass. Ooh, I like it. One of, the, one of the things with ADD that's so hard is that it's really hard to prioritize what's most important. So this is why I get like stuck on details that really don't matter like this tutorial is supposed to be it just it was it was supposed to be just about the pond tool <laughs> but I just I get carried away and it's really hard for my brain to figure out what's important and what's not so it's like part of my brain is telling me Kara move on this is not important for this video but then the other part of me is like yeah but I like it and it's so fun and I love all these details <laughs> and I can't stop <laughs> it's okay I'll just turn this into a overall landscaping tutorial that way I can get away with all my shenanigans of going a little overboard with all these details yeah I think that looks 
looks cool. Look at that. Ew, it really does kind of look like a spider's coming out. You know what? I know, I know I need to move on. But look, if we take some of the grass and kind of put it in the hinge areas where it's a little weird looking to kind of hide where it doesn't really blend together very well, then maybe, yeah, that looks a little less spider-like. Smooth out those little edges. Although now it just looks like a spider with hairy knees. <laughs> Okay. Okay, enough care. I just leave it. All right, I'm just going to leave it. It is what it is. Okay, the special effects, that's really what we need to focus on now. Okay, so if we go to this outdoor water decor and we click on the duck again, these are all the special effects, like how we placed the log earlier. And I'm thinking, I don't know if alligators are in sandy lagoons, but let's put some alligators in here. And in build mode, it is kind of ugly because they're these poster looking, papery looking things. You can size it down with the, bra the left bracket key. And if you've got tool mod, you can actually click on them and then make them completely invisible. But I would recommend recommend testing it out in live mode first, like testing out that you like where the placement is. So for example, I've just placed two. Let's see what that looks like in live mode. Where's my gators? Oh, they're not showing up. Is my is my water too shallow? Or maybe they don't always show up, like maybe they're not always there. If you go into tab mode as well, you can click tab and then click uh, press the Q button and you can go underwater and look around, which is really cool. It's as if you're swimming underwater. I don't see any alligators, so I don't know whether my pool is too shallow. Let's go back into build mode and let's test it out in the deeper water and see if that's the issue. Okay, let's place an alligator right here. Go over into live mode. Don't see it. Yeah, maybe they only appear every once in a while. Okay, well, let's try the other special effects. Note to self care, I know what you're doing before you actually do a tutorial. <laughs> we can just pretend I'm learning along with you guys. That's what it is. Okay, so we can have dragonfly swarms. Let's put the dragonflies over here. And I'm actually going to elevate some of them because I want them to be at different heights. Okay, we'll have some dragonflies over there. And then the ducks come in, I think, like groups of three with some baby ducks. So you don't want to clutter too many of them up together, else it looks like you've got this massive herd. I don't know what groups of ducks are called, but you end up with a ton of ducks. So let's just put two of the white ones over there. And then let's put one of the colored ones over here. And the swans, I don't know whether the swans are in groups of three as well. We'll see. Let's put some swans over here. Have some swimming in the middle over here. And then, ooh, let's do some fireflies by the willow tree. We're going to have some hovering over the water and then I'm using the nine key to place them all around the tree. Although the fireflies, you're not going to see them during the day. You're only going to see them when it hits the evening time. And again, you can size them down. I'm not going to bother right now just for the sake of speed. Okay, so we've got that over there and then let's place a log over here. And in live mode, you can actually add a turtle to it, I think. A turtle to it and some other things. Let's put another one over here. What else have we got? Ooh, mosquitoes. I don't like mosquitoes. But we'll do it just so that we can see what they look like in live mode. Let's put some here, have some flying up in the air. Okay, so we've got our mosquitoes and country fish. You can't fish for these, but it'll add some nice animation to your water. So we'll put some of those in. And tadpoles tend to be in the shallow areas by plants. So let's put some tadpoles over here. And then what else have we got? Dra did we do dragonflies already? Yes, we did dragonflies. Oh, and then we've got these like, I think these are the similar to the willow wisp that you get in outdoor retreat. Let's put some by the waterfall just to make it look a bit more magical. I'm going to elevate some of them to be right next to the water. And if you go into the debug menu, there's all of these fishing signs. And I'm going to use these ones. And this is a, this is the pre-stocked one. And if you submerge the fishing sign into the pond, then you should be able to fish in the pond. And if you want, you can always size this down a lot smaller so it's not so huge. Okay, now let's go over into live mode and see all of this animated. Oh yeah, so we've got swans in groups of two, ducks in groups of three. Oh, they're so cute with their little toes. And then, oh, look at all of those mosquitoes. I don't know if it picks it up on the YouTube video. They're, they're very faint. Can you see them flying around? I don't know if I can get any closer. Not really. Okay, let's see what else we have. Now we've got our koi fish because of the lily pads that we have. But yeah, we've got all our dragonflies buzzing around. Oh, look at the little baby ducks. So that's fun. And then let's check on our fish. Okay, there they are. Now if we go into tab mode and do press the Q key again, let's see if we can see them underwater. Oh yeah, look, you can see them underwater swimming. Fun, I like that. Ooh, and look at all these fish over here you can see. Nice. Now those are the fish right in front of us. Those are the ones that you can actually fish for. Okay, so we're out of tab mode. Let's look for our tadpoles. Oh, there they are. They're all so tiny. Let's see if we can see them underwater. No, it doesn't seem like we can see the tadpoles underwater. Just from the top swimming around. Ooh, and then I guess they're a bit different than the will-o'-wisps. But look, you can see them. They glow at different times. The ones up here don't seem to be glowing. So maybe you actually have to put them in the water. But the ones that I put on top of the water, they're submerged. The glowing effect is under the water. So it seems like they don't tend to work when you elevate them. Oh, yes. And then we can click on the log. Allow turtles to sun on log. Oh, look how cute. <laughs> look at them just sunbathing, enjoying the weather. And 
then oh it seems like you can't click on this sign in order to fish so maybe it's one of the other brown signs let's switch over to build mode it's hard to tell what fish are going to come with some of these signs but usually with these signs if you place them along the edge it puts fish over here and then if you click on the sign you should be able to fish now of course I'm, because this part this edge that i'm putting it on is so steep i am going to have to tool mod it but if you put it on a flat surface if you don't use tool mod then it'll work fine okay here we go i've clicked on the sign and you can go fishing perfect look at that we're fishing it just looks everything has come alive everything looks cool i don't know what happened to the alligators though for some reason they don't seem to be swimming around so i don't know what i did or didn't do oh there they are <gasps> yay look i guess they only appear at certain times oh that's cool and this is a pretty shallow lagoon that we created oh i love them that's awesome and then they disappear <sighs> that looks so cool okay last but not least we really need to show the last part of this video that i want to focus on now the pond tool comes with this really cool ability to flood the first floor of a build it doesn't work in basements but it does work on the first floor so let's say you have created this pond i filled this entire 20 by 30 lot with water so for example like we can lower the water level that's what it looks like. I just created a pit and then added water or you can fill to height like we talked about earlier and it's up there like that. Now, if you want to flood the first floor, you can build a room like so and lower it into the water. Now, currently there's no water inside the room and that's fine. You can actually lower this all the way down so that the water hits the very top of the room. Now, I fully submerged it to just to show you that you can fully submerge the room if you want to, but you won't be able to play in it. Like your Sims, you won't be able to do gameplay inside a room like that. So you want to only submerge it where part of the room is still poking through like so. And you can do a fully submerged room this way and you can put windows in. So, okay, at what room height are we? We're at tall wall. Let's try and put in some tall windows. And as you can see, it won't let you because it won't allow windows to be partially submerged in water they have to be fully submerged so the downside is you have to use smaller windows but there's actually a cool trick you can do that I'm going to show you in a minute but you can create these underwater buildings so like if you want to create like the lost city of Atlantis or an underwater mermaid some underwater modern home or whatever whatever your heart desires you can create some underwater rooms which is really cool that also means though is that if you decide let's say to do like a partially submerged room like this the windows have to either be above the water or beneath it it's not going to work see to have them partially so you either have to put it above or below that's the water depth is too shallow for this kind of window so i'm going to have to pick something a lot smaller and even some some of the windows are just not going to work even if they're fully submerged like this one isn't going to work maybe because it's open let's try another one yep not going to work but there are some other small windows that will so the ones that have glass in them seem to work so you can place them above or beneath just not between but another cool trick that you can do is actually flood the interior of the room so if i go over to the pool tools because when i build this room it got rid of the water inside even though it's sub surrounded by water from the exterior if we go over into our pool tools you can actually raise the water inside the room if you use this tool here fill to height and just click on the room it will fill your room with water to the same level as the exterior which is really cool now your sims can't walk through the water so you're gonna have to create like if you want to have a, submer a room submerged in water you will have to create some maybe like platforms that your sims can walk around and you can elevate this up let's say I don't want it to be that full of water it's gonna get rid of the water again so just click fill to height again and it's going to fill it with the water and so i'm going to head on i'm just going to jump on over to something i started to build because it's really cool what you can do with this okay so here's something i started to create and ignore the flickering and what i basically did is i took these from eco lifestyle and look what i did the windows will not work like i said if they are partially submerged in the water but if you size them down with the bracket key or if you've got tool mod you can actually make them completely invisible so if I bring up tool mod and I click on this object, I can scale it to 0 0.001 like so, and it's going to completely disappear. And if I resize these so they're not flickering, because that's driving me crazy, I just rescaled it to 0.99 so that they don't flicker. And then I go over to my pool tool and see how I've created these platforms that your sim can walk around on. I can click the fill to height and it's going to fill these little reservoirs with water. And look at that. I've got like this underground sewer system. And look, you can look through it and it's got a literal hole that goes through to the other side like so. Now I haven't aligned these pipes with the hole in the wall because I mean I'd have to finesse this and I'm, I'm just trying to show you real quick what you can do but look at some of these cool options you can do. You can do like an underground station like a medieval sewer system underneath a castle or and like this could be the moat around the castle like there's all kinds of really cool stuff that you can do with this tool so I'm sure I'm going to discover some more things that you can do as I play with this more so I'll definitely be using these little tricks in my build. Anyway I hope you found this tutorial on landscaping and using the pond tool and the all the other terrain tools 
helpful. I did get a little carried away. I'm sorry, but actually I'm not sorry. That's just the way I am. <laughs> so anyway, if you have any other ideas of things you'd like me to do tutorials on, I'm not the best person at doing tutorials, but hopefully you still find them helpful. And I'm going to separate the tropical lagoon from the other landscape that I, you know, because I've just put them both on the same lot and they don't go together. I'll separate them and, and post them as separate lots that you can use in your own builds if you want to build around it. Um, so hopefully you find that helpful too. Anyway, I need to quit yammering and just finish this video. So until next time, guys, I freaking love you.